In this video, I'm going to show you how you can animate your Power BI visuals using the Play Axis custom visual. We're going to go through it step by step together so you can follow along as well. All of that and more. So without further ado, let's get started. Hi, my name is Fernan and welcome to the Solutions Abroad YouTube channel where we cover tips tricks and best practices when working with Power BI. I upload new videos every week, so make sure you hit that subscribe button and the bell icon to get notified when a new one is out. So the play axis visual essentially allows you to play out your data across different time periods or categories by simply clicking one button. And I got introduced to this play access in a video that I made in the past, which shows you how you can create and add a play access to play out your scatter charts in Power BI. In this scatter chart visual, there's an option to add a play access, which allows you to show how your data evolves over time. Unfortunately, though, this play access option is only available in the scatter charts and not on the other out of the box visuals. So today I'm going to show you how you can add a play access custom visual in your report so that you can use it against the other charts that you have in your report. The first thing is because it's a custom visual, you'll need to import it into your Power BI report first. So to do that, you'll need to click the ellipsis icon under the visualizations pane, get more visuals, which will open the app source for us, which will have a list of all the custom visuals available to you. And by the way, for this option to work, you'll need to be signed into your Power BI account first. But once you're here in the app source, you can simply search for the play access. So this will bring it up this one called play access dynamic slicer. Now you have two options here. You can add this visual and use it straight away in your current reports, or you can download a sample which downloads a PBIX file with this visual already implemented. So it's pretty handy if you want to see how this works without having to implement it yourself first. So once you select add, what it will do is it will import that custom visual in your report. You'll see it as an option under the visualizations pane. So you'll see it here, the play access custom visual. So let's add it into our report page now. So then just click it, which will bring up this uh, this visual for us. And then we're simply going to add a field that we want to play in this axis. So for now, I'm going to put the year month into the play axis here just so that we can see how it will look like. So before we go any further, I just want to show you the data sets that I prepared for you today, which is the usual one that we use the Northwind data sets. So Northwind is a fictional company that sells goods, grocery goods internationally. And we took a subset of this sample data set for our purposes here. So we have a few things like the order details, which is a list of all the orders and the products that have been ordered, how much was ordered and how many. We have information about the orders, like when they ordered the products, the products themselves, which links back into the order. So the name of the products and the categories of those products. We have two helper tables for this data set that we've created. We have a calendar table, which we are using for a lot of our uh, time intelligence calculations. And we have a simple measures table that houses all the measures that we create in this model. In this case, we have one pre-created for sales, which simply calculates the sales by, by multiplying the unit price to the quantity. Now in the calendar table, the one that we've just dragged in is the year month bind, which is basically just grouping our dates into months, which we can now loop into or play using the play access. So this is the one that we are using at the moment. So if we go back to our report page here, so we have a few fairly familiar icons here, like the play, pause, stop, forward or rewind, which we can use to interact with or your users can interact with in your report. Now, if you select play, pay attention to what's being shown on the right hand side in this uh, data label that we have here. So it goes through every single year month in our calendar table. And when it reaches the very end, it will simply just stop 
So at the moment, this visual doesn't really do anything yet because we don't have any other visuals in our page. So let's change that. Let's make this a little bit smaller. I'll just put it at the top here. And maybe let's add and have a look at the sales by different categories. I'm gonna put in the categories and sales here and we're gonna put it in a bar chart. So this bar chart shows us the sales, total sales by category of products. And probably we can make this easier by just adding a few data labels here. Just zero. There we go. So now what this does is it summarizes the sales by category, but it also ranks them from the highest to the lowest. Um, and that does it by default. But you will see here that we are sorting this chart by sales descending highest at the top. And see what happens when we play uh, from the play axis. So you'll notice that when we hit the play button, it starts to cycle through all the months available in our calendar table, regardless if there are sales or not. And you'll also notice that in the chart itself, instead of filtering or showing and moving the categories based on the current year month and ranking them appropriately, we're simply highlighting it and not filtering it, which is what we want. So let's try to fix that first. So I'm going to hit stop here just to go back to the very beginning. And because the play axis is a visual by itself, it sort of acts like an interactive element within our page, which means that you can control how it interacts to other visuals in your page. So you can simply go ahead and edit how it interacts by going to, I believe it's format under edit interactions it will bring up some options for us and you'll notice that as we have the play axis selected you can see these new options at the top here for our chart it says at the moment it's currently highlighting and we don't want that we just want it to filter this uh, this chart to filter and just show us the sales and rank them by the total sales so basically filtering so we can disable it now, the edit interactions, and let's hit that play button again. So you'll see, obviously, for the months where we don't have any sales, it still cycles through them. But once we get to those months that have any sales, you'll see what happens. It organizes, and if I hit pause here, it organizes all the categories by sales on that month and reorganizes them in this chart, which is really cool. And one last thing that I want to fix is obviously to skip any of those months that doesn't have any sales in them, which we actually don't want to cycle through anyway, because we have no data in them. So the quick fix to do that is by simply adding the sales as a filter in our play axis. And just to say, if the sales is uh, not blank, then show it, otherwise skip it. So you'll notice that if we now hit play, it will always show those months that have any data in them. And if there are, then it will skip them. And once it reaches the very end of our calendar, it will simply just stop. So now with this setup, you'll notice that obviously the categories move up and down in our bar chart, but it makes it a little bit difficult to see which one is which as it's scrolling through quite quickly through the months in our calendar table. So an easier way to kind of track which categories are in this list and how they move up and down is by adding some color coding in them. So to do that, we'll just go to our bar chart here, go to the formatting, the visual and under bars, instead of having the default color for all of them, we can just simply say or define the colors for each of the bars. So beverages would be like this, for example, we'll just assign random colors on each of these so we can easily identify them in our list here. Here we are. So now you'll notice the difference when we hit the play button. 
you'll see that it's easily distinguishable which category goes up and down because we have them color coded on this bar chart that we've made. So your play axis doesn't have to be time related. It could be other things you want, might want to cycle through such as categories instead. But the preferred use for play axis like this would be using time intelligence like cycling through dates, months or years. Depending on the number of categories that you have in your play axis, you might want to cycle a bit faster if you have a lot of them and slower if you have a few. So you have a few formatting options when it comes to the, the cycles. So you can manage them here under the formatting your visual for the play axis under the animation setting. So here the current cycle is set to one second, which is a thousand millisecond. And you can change this, you can make it uh, slower or faster, depending on what you put here. And you have other options here as well, such as auto starting the play for your play axis or looping your values once it reaches the very end. Other than that, you have other options to customize your play axis, like changing the default colors for your buttons. And you can also have the option to disable the caption, which is the caption that you have on the right hand side over there. And that's really it for this video. I hope you are now a little bit more familiar with using the play axis custom visual in your Power BI reports. Thanks for watching as usual. Give this video a like if you found it useful. Give it a dislike if you didn't, so I know to do better for next time. Ask your questions in the comment section box below so I can help you and you can help others. If you really like this video, we have a Patreon page where you can support the channel and get exclusive perks like early access, demo files, and credits at the end of these videos. Thanks again for watching and see you in the next one. Bye-bye.